Guess what? Azura can actually finish this. And yes, this would have resulted in Takumi dying, so I'm glad I didn't do this. But... I'll protect you. Ocean's Grey Waves this! <laughs> Bye, insane father-in-law. <laughs> So yeah, Azura actually can do that. That's pretty cool. Now then. And yeah, this is this. I, I guess they say that Kamui is Valite royalty with Mikoto, but this doesn't make all that much sense unless you know about hidden truths, so yeah. In fact, if anything, Azura is really the next heir to the throne, but I mean, Kamui's married her anyway on this, in this universe, so yeah. Starting today, Kamui shall be known as the face touching king. People will come from far and wide to have him touch their faces. <laughs> All hail the face-touching king! Congratulations. Oh, you're suddenly here. Thank you. <laughs> and please, touch all of our faces. We welcome it. Yes. Yeah, which you already have a lot of that isn't being used in Vala, so... Not entirely sure why they needed to give you land, but anyway. Maybe to build face shrines on and stuff like that. Because Kamui will restore the ancient face civilization to its former glory. He will put face monuments everywhere. The walls will be full of faces. <laughs> Long live the face-touching king! Yes, a person who loves faces. Hmm. Brother. <laughs> yeah! Thanks, Leo. Thanks for bringing that up. No. Hopefully, uh, the curse is lifted, right? Uh, it's lifted, right? Someone go into the real world and say Vala and test that. <laughs> yes! Ha! <laughs> Thank you. This time Azura survived. And, yep. Always has to be at least one person in a Fire Emblem game who disappears from the pages of history forever. Wonder if Gunter's ending is going to change in this one. Finally we get to look on the lake in happier times now. Hey. <laughs> yes, he mostly enjoyed the face-touching party afterwards. <laughs> no. But I learned a trick from Xander to imagine everyone as bunnies. Yeah, pretty much. No. <laughs> Especially not with your low defense and going squish like that. Fire Emblem rulers need to at least be tough enough to be a boss fight. Azura. What will happen to the Yato now? Will it stay the Chainsword forever, or will it go back to its original form and sleep? Huh? I heard that the ending changes slightly if Kamui and Azura are married. I'm not sure if this is where it changes or not. Huh? Yes, but I guess it is a bit hard suddenly going from, oh, I'm royalty of one country, oh, I'm royalty of another country, oh, actually, I'm the king of a third country, which has barely anyone in it, and... Everyone in it is like all zombies that I don't know if that's going to be fixed or not. Maybe they all disappeared when an uncourse went. I see. Huh? <laughs> is it a song? I thought so. 
please don't be the copyright song. Whew. Thank you, it wasn't. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think I know who did. I think I've read that it was a nun course who wrote the song. Uh. Yeah, I wonder who could have written that who wasn't a human. Oh, there we go. Bring that up. Now I can I can probably look up what all of the ancient texts mean now. Yeah, it's well less of a villain song and more of a please kill me song. Yeah, this all makes sense if you've played Hidden Truths. Yeah. A lot of parts of it take on a very different meaning. <laughs> Though if that was the case, why did he uh why did he write the um the Hosh or no lyrics of the song? But anyway. And then there's this. Yeah, so people have mentioned how this is the only route where the final chapter is not uh the line from the song. And yeah, it makes sense because we're finally going into territory that the song doesn't cover. Yes, maybe Yazuru should write the next part. Or Kamui. Then it will come up as face, 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 touch, face, face, rub, face, face, rub, 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 waifu. Yeah, that that's how it's gonna turn into. So thanks for suggesting that, Azura. That was that was a yeah, good job. Huh, we get an echo there yes. of the first time we see her. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, the face touching party. The part that Kamui has really been looking forward to. Yeah, I got the feeling we'd have the final cutscene. In the name of the first dragons, I, Xander, speaking for the Kingdom of Nor. And I, Ryoma, speaking for Hoshido. Vow to keep peace between us. It's about time. We shall all be bound by this vow. Yes, peace for our nations. I swear. Mm-hmm. Yay! We're friends now! Friends? <laughs> <sighs> I wish it were that easy to just forgive. You know? I know. But healing can only begin with trust. Yeah. No, I knew. We swear to our people, to our countries, and to the brave soul who brought us together. Oshido and Nor are united together forever. Shot. Oh, Leo's gonna be. We swear to you. Okay, that was that was pretty cool. So yeah, say what you will about this game's story as a whole. I do personally think, to me, Revelation did have the most satisfying ending, and definitely the most interesting final boss fight. I still think overall, gameplay-wise, I liked. Uh, Conquest's final chapter more, but as far as final bosses in the series go, Anankos definitely wasn't bad. That was quite a fun fight. I enjoyed that one. So, yeah, glad for that. Glad it wasn't completely pathetic like Birthright's finale. So, yeah, thoughts on Revelation as a whole? Uh, I do feel like this route is the only one that to me feels like an actual real Fire Emblem game. The Fire Emblem appears you have the Fire Emblem theme showing up in the ending, and a lot of the stuff... Okay, so one thing that I really missed on the other routes, recruiting new allies from the ranks of your enemies. That is something that feels like the essence of Fire Emblem to me. And the fact that just in both the Hoshto and Nor storylines, almost everyone you recruited was just on your side from the beginning, or immediately chooses to side with you after you fight them and beat them. Here you actually had to work for a lot of the recruits, and I really like that. I just... 
got such a good feeling of like having Elise recruit Charlotte and Benny, those kind of things, just like that really brought back those great Fire Emblem recruitment memories. So I really feel like recruiting new allies from the ranks of your enemies is just such, it's just a big part of Fire Emblem and I really miss that on the other rooms. Uh, I'm also glad that Hans and Iago died early, like the failures they are, that's good. And I will say, okay, Flaws of Revelation, a few of the early chapters were pretty bad. Chapter 10 was absolutely horrible. It did get better though. Later chapters were a bit hit and miss. A lot of the moving platform gimmicks, I didn't really like those. They felt like, uh, it was a bit kind of tricky to... Anyway, really annoying there. Hard to explain, but just like, you're, you're not in control of how you move around the map, and that really doesn't work for Fire Emblem. But the later chapters, unlike I, what I thought with Birthright, there was a pretty good build-up to the finale. Uh, actually getting into the enemy's stronghold, fighting through enemies, there were some actually quite tough chapters towards the end, and I really liked that. Overall, I feel the difficulty, it was advertised as being in between Birthright and Conquest. Overall, I feel it leaned a little bit more towards Birthright, except suddenly then, uh, then chapter 25 happened, which is like, oh hey, uh, that chapter could have belonged on Conquest, but, uh, other than that, the final chapter was quite decent. Uh, I did enjoy the final chapter a lot. Uh, the one beforehand, that enemy rush was pretty brutal, and I liked that. And, yeah, overall, yeah, and also, okay, another weakness of Revelation to me, though, is the cross root supports are sadly a bit hit and miss. Now, all of the royal ones, with the possible exception of Camilla's romantic options, are all top-notch, absolutely fantastic. Amazing, it's clear a lot of the effort of this route went into those supports, and all of them are really great. Especially the A-plus supports, those are all really good. Uh, and even the romances are pretty good as well. But all of the other supports, you'd think that limiting yourself to writing only two supports for this route, they'd really pull out all the stops and make both those supports very great. Not always the case. It's very hit and miss, and sometimes some of the Revelation exclusive pairings are some of the few pairings in this whole game that I found to be outright terrible, so that was a shame. I was really hoping that the Revelation exclusive pairings would be pretty great, but yeah. So that's kind of a shame overall. And uh, I'll talk more about the pairings individually uh, when when we actually get to the character epilogue, which is going to take a while, so I'll probably give final thoughts on the project then. All in all though, I do understand why a lot of people think this game's story is a bit disappointing, but it does have its good moments, and overall I feel like Revelation's ending was one of them. The reason for Kamui becoming king is a little out of nowhere if you haven't played Hidden Truths, but still. The, the final cutscene, that was a good cutscene, apart from Elise and Sakura giggling throughout the whole thing, that was a bit annoying. But apart from that, that was a good final cutscene. Uh, yeah, so that was good, and... All in all, I quite enjoyed this route. I would have appreciated maybe a little bit more challenge around the mid-game, and a little bit less terrible chapters early on. Although really the only chapter that I would say that I outright hated was the Shuffling Snow chapter. That was one of the worst Fire Emblem chapters I've ever played, period, but it's thankfully only one chapter. The rest were a little annoying, but never truly awful. Like, I'm fine, like, a lot of people seem to really hate Chapter 7 Revelation. I thought that was fine overall. Uh, I can see why it would be bad if you had a defense floor Kamui, but I found it alright. Oh, and yeah, here are all these paralogs that I did. Notice the differences in heroes on a lot of these. Now, very soon, I'm gonna have to mute the video and play some different music, because I know I could slow it down, but I'd much rather be completely safe here. So, while I give my final thoughts on how the project went, because I've already said everything I want to say about the story. Wow, six turns for an uncle. Oh, and six turns for you might try too, wow. So anyway, very soon I'm going to cut the music, and then I'll give some more thoughts on the project. I've really said everything about the story that I want to, and I'm really, I don't know, I, I can see where people are coming from, but I find a lot of the story complaining just, I've heard it again and again and again, and it's really getting old by this point. And so, here we go. This is going to be weird uh, commentating over this without any um, music at all, which is kind of shame. It's annoying that the only time you hear the Revelation lyrics are actually in this. I was 
fully expecting there to be another song, and, and you to actually hear the Revelation lyrics proper, but yeah, they're exclusive to the credits theme, which is kind of annoying, because the credits theme is completely muted on YouTube, because of, uh, being ink, being a bit, yeah, crazy about, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, Nasa, oh, uh, yeah, sadly, I had to erase one child because of Azura, and Hinata was the one to go. I don't hate Hisame or anything, I just find him less interesting than a lot of the others. Funny thing, though, is that, um, yeah, technically, this isn't a complete epilogue, because I won't have Hisame in it, but uh, that's just what you do. I also just realised, I don't think I noticed any difference at all with the ending, so that thing about the ending changing if Kamui and Azura are married, I don't think that either, I don't think that's true, or the change is extremely subtle. But anyway, I'll talk more about that later. And yeah, Reyna, she's got really good supports now that I've read them, it's just a shame that she barely exists in the actual... Well, anything, really. And yep, Flora didn't battle as well, so I guess I should take this time to talk about final thoughts on the whole project, and yeah. So, just putting it out there, I'm probably not going to do another blind run of a game this long again. This was just a special uh, occasion, really, but yeah. I just checked, and this didn't actually go as long as my Awakening playthrough did, which is kind of weird, because I didn't have three rooms to deal with there, but... Didn't have to do any practice runs in this either, just my first time uh, playing through everything. But... So, yeah, it's been a very, very long road. Been playing this ever since the game first came out in English. All the way to now, so that's pretty much, uh, yeah, around half a year, so... It's a long time to spend on one game, especially one blind run, but yeah, the fact that the game is essentially three games is what did that, really. So, overall though, I have really enjoyed recording this. Uh, I actually don't regret doing Birthright and Conquest back-to-back. -back. A lot of people didn't like me doing that, but I actually quite enjoyed it, because the easier Birthright chapters, I guess, gave me some time to kind of relax after the tougher Conquest chapters. It was great to compare the two routes back-to-back. -back. Playing them one after the other got... Well, it just meant that I got a feel of both routes' characters at the same time. And I could really feel the differences in the gameplay. I just I just quite enjoyed that and thought that, that was actually quite a good approach to doing it. It also meant that uh, I had a steady stream of videos going. I could record one chapter of one, one chapter of the other, and yeah, I didn't need to record tons of, um... There is a, a different main scenario for the Revelation Path. Interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, I didn't have to record tons of chapters in advance just to be able to put up videos for uh, a little while, but yeah. This whole blind run's also taken me through an entire tour of university and right through to basically graduating from university, so that's kind of been interesting to try and keep up with that, but I I hope everyone has enjoyed it. It seems like reaction has been mostly positive. Uh, and overall, I didn't have to deal with all that many spoilers in the comments. I had one or two jerks who intentionally spoiled me on things. They tended to leave quite early, though. That was mostly just early on. And I think it did work, putting that title card there. Rita Strobo, Lost in Thoughts All Alone is amazing. But, yeah. That title card, I think, did help prevent spoilers. Of course, a lot of people, it is a thing. Everyone has their own different definitions of spoilers. And a lot of people didn't quite get it first. Curse you being in for not being out, for not letting me use this song. Anyway, uh, a lot of people didn't get it first that I considered gameplay spoilers in the same category as story spoilers. In fact, I, I guess I'll get to that later. But yeah, so spoilers was literally anything about the game. And a lot of people didn't realize that at first, but thankfully they caught on pretty quickly once I told them. And most of the gameplay spoilers people told me weren't too major. Stuff like what classes got what skills, which yeah, I did want to be blind on, but it wasn't the end of the world if I was revealed on them. But anyway, the lack of spoilers in the comments, however, wasn't so much of a problem. It was a problem that I was at this game for so long, it had been out in Japan for so long, that naturally I'd come across a lot of spoilers on the internet before I even recorded. And I'm so sorry to people that I didn't get, like, blind reactions to a lot of things because I had been spoiled on a lot. Especially Revelation, because I've been playing the other two routes for ages, and it was so long before I got to Revelation. Oh, yeah. I had heard about this. So, yeah. This is unavoidable, sadly. I still feel like Scarlet should not have joined on this route at all. 
if they were only going to give her to you for one chapter and then kill her off in the story, she should have just been an NPC. Uh, just, yeah. Don't, like, just, we should have never have got her in the army. There was no point at all. Absolutely no point, other than to make pairing her with Kamui even more awkward, because then you can have her child kill her zombified version. So yeah, I really felt like Scarlet should not have joined at all, really, on this route, if she was going to die that early. Uh, but, yeah, regardless. So yeah, the other thing. All in all, though, I really didn't care about story spoilers that much for this game. It was mostly gameplay that I wanted my blind reactions to. Something that some people didn't seem to realise at first, but uh, what really inspired me to do this blind run was actually uh, a YouTuber that I follow who does a lot of blind runs of Mega Man games. Seeing him, a veteran of that series, playing a new installment of that series for the first time, and reacting to all the gameplay uh, details and things like that, that is what I was going for with this playthrough. It really wasn't so much about reacting to the story, because as I found out, the story wasn't the best anyway. Now, I don't think the story is as horrible as a lot of people say it is, and I really think people give it are a bit too harsh on it overall, but I do feel like it was one of the weaker points of the game. But gameplay-wise, this was a pretty good solid game, and there are a lot of nice things to react to here. The chapter gimmicks, very few of them felt too jerkish, really. Except for, yeah, okay, I will say, the, oh, hey, this is a totally new uh, epilogue entry, so I should probably say this. Just read this, then. But the true extent of his strength was terrible growth rates. And he was not. But yeah, anyway. Uh, I, I will say, doing Revelation Chapter 24, The Stealth Way, that is the only other chapter I classify on the route that would be downright awful, because there is no way to do it without memorizing the enemy's exact patrol routes, and I just really don't think that's fair. That is just not fair at all, and you really can't expect a player to be able to do that. It's just trial and error, and just really... Yeah. Didn't like that at all, but thankfully that's optional. And, uh, really, oh, you miss out on boots, but boots are only plus one movement in this game anyway, and you can get more via the bonus box as well, so, yeah, I don't really care too much about missing out the stealth, on the stealth rewards. But yeah, like I said, and gameplay-wise, I really did enjoy the gameplay of this game. I love just how much they improved the pair-up system from Awakening. It's amazing how the pair-up system went from being so utterly broken to a really core cool part of the strategy, and... The fact that enemies could use it too, it was all just a great step in the right direction. It's just kind of amazing that they fully fixed such a bad mechanic after only one game. So I'm really impressed by them for doing that. The Unbreakable Weapons as well. Okay, this is another new epilogue. Or they could just be, that could just be other animals. But anyway. Uh, anyway. Oh, this is... Is this totally new? This must be changed, yeah. Yeah, that's similar to a lot of uh, endings from... Uh, from some of the early games, the characters just appeared mysteriously. God, Asagi... Gunter actually got pretty high in the rankings, so that's cool. But anyway... I could comment on the fact that the localizers are being brought up in the credits, but I really don't want to provoke any drama there. I honestly don't see why there was a lot of drama there, because... Uh, I really think that Awakening was more heavily edited, and so many people just don't realize that. It's kind of funny how Ike's voice actor gets top billing there. But just, people just look for any excuse to complain about anything when it came to this game, which was kind of a shame. One other thing, and I feel really bad for saying this, but just one, one of the downsides of this project is blind running a game that in some ways was not well received by certain sectors of the fandom. It did get a bit upsetting for me to constantly see comments hating and bashing on the story all the time. 
I know that a lot of the things people said do make sense, and I understand that, but it really gets you down and demotivates you to keep playing if all you're seeing in the comments is just, oh, the story's terrible, they shouldn't have, they should have done this so much differently. Wow, they really let us down, what terrible, terrible people. It's just, I know I'm exaggerating there, but just, all in all, I just feel like a lot of the complaints have already been said and done. It's just, I got sick of it towards the end, and it really did demotivate me to continue playing. Now, I'm not just... I hate calling out my viewers like this, and a lot of you, I did enjoy your comments, and I'm glad that I didn't have to disable comments entirely, which is what I did on the previous blind one that I did. Um, yeah, on the, not the previous blind one, on Pokemon X, uh, Lost Dimension was obscure enough that I felt that leaving comments was fine, I didn't need to risk spoilers there. But, um, yeah, on the Pokemon X blind run that I did, I actually disabled comments for the entirety of the series, though back then, that was when I only had about five regular commenters, if that, so I didn't really miss out on all that much there. But with this, I enjoyed having comments on, and normally I would record an entire blind run in advance before posting it to avoid spoilers, but this time I just couldn't do that because of how long this was, so... Yeah, but overall I did enjoy reading your comments, it's just that that did kind of get me down seeing a lot of complaining about things, but I guess that just happens sometimes. But anyway, thoughts on pairings now that we're actually getting into these. This was not as terrible as I thought it would be. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't really that bad. Let's hope Felicia became a military commander uh, in a magical class, otherwise she'd be terrible. This was actually not too bad until the air. Okay, I still feel like if little bits of the S support weren't there, this would have actually been uh, been fine. It wasn't that bad apart from a few Yandere inclinations in the inclinations in the S support. That was really all. And who's next? I really enjoyed this. Uh, whenever cross-cultural pairings for a Borrow were suggested. It's nearly always Niles. I haven't seen much of a Borrow and Benny really talked about, but I really loved this pairing. I thought it was actually pretty good uh, overall. Uh, one of the better Revelation exclusive pairings in my opinion, actually. Shame I never got to really try out how good Ignatius was in this one. It probably would be pretty decent. Uh, this was, in all honesty, I kind of forgotten about this one. This was actually pretty decent. Uh, wasn't bad, wasn't fantastic either. It was alright as far as pairings go, but again, not terrible. I think his other option is Hunter. I wonder how that is. And let's see who's next. Oh wow, Leo and Sakura next? Uh, yeah, apart from the C support, this was very good. Uh, I thought this was quite nice overall. Oh yeah, and Xander's becoming king. Yeah, I've heard some of the royal cross-cultural paired endings are a bit weird. Kind of wish they'd make unique pairings for these ones. Unique endings for these pairings. Az uh, Azuma and Effie. This one is also... A lot of people like this the best for Effie out of all of her options. I think this one's another one of the better Revelation exclusive pairings. I wouldn't say it's my favourite overall, but uh, why did you retire, Effie? You're amazing. But anyway, wouldn't say it's my favourite, but definitely one of the better Revelation pairings. Selena and Tsubaki has... Really, there's just the awkward implication of her marrying someone who is really a lot like her mother. That is a little bit weird, but... Wait. He had a perfect record, and then they disappeared from records. Yeah. Yeah, good job paired endings. Good job generic paired endings. Nice contradiction there. Ryoma and Camilla, again, not bad. All in all, I feel like Camilla got the short end of the stick when it came to her exclusive pairings. But, yeah, they're, um, they're alright. In this case, giving up a raw title semi makes sense, maybe. But yeah, this wasn't bad, but there are better pairings. Although, stat-wise, Shiro was an absolute beast. Hayato and Nyx wasn't that bad, it was pretty decent overall, but I was hoping for a little bit more from it, actually. So, yeah, didn't end up liking this one as much as I thought it would, but 
Their child, though, was pretty great, so I will give that pairing that. And yeah, they definitely make a good uh, leader of the wind tribe pair. This one was better than I thought it would be too. Still not amazing, but the end supports of this one were actually quite decent. The early supports were a little bit meh, but... Uh, yeah, very generic ending for Setsuna there. And next we have... This is uh, also weird. A lot of people say that they like Odin and Kagero better. I really like this pairing. This is actually one of my favourite pairings for Orochi, in all honesty. Uh, and one of my favourite pairings for Odin, actually. So this was actually one of my favourite Revelation exclusive pairings. Well, yeah, she'd have to read that and then uh, leave for another world, I guess. Takumi and Elise, also a pretty good pairing. Again, not as good in the beginning, but pretty great towards the end. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, Kiragi makes pretty much every child that isn't named uh, um, Ophelia terrible, so... I mean, Kiragi was alright, but... But still, yeah, that was kind of unfortunate. But I do like that pairing, probably better than him and uh, Camilla. This was another fantastic pairing stat-wise, and overall it's probably one of my favourite of the royal supports, uh, of my, the royal pairings, actually. They work quite well together, actually. Oh, uh, and yeah, this one is the one that makes a lot of, does make a lot of sense. So yeah, Xander became King of Nor, uh, his wife became a general in the Hoshinami. Unless, like, the two countries emerge now. Uh, that makes a lot of sense if they, they are. Ha, huh, you overtook Xander? Really? That's kind of strange, but I guess I'm, I'm glad that I got to use Baruch for a little bit more. This pairing wasn't wasn't great. It's kind of annoying. There aren't that many Baruka pairings that are all that fantastic. Although, from what I've heard, Saizo is pretty good, so I'm kind of annoyed I didn't go with that one. So, yeah, that's all I'll really say about that. Uh, this one was not the best. I wouldn't say it's terrible, but in all honesty, I didn't really feel much of Hana's unique personality through this. It really just felt like she was just another girl that Laszlo flirted with, and that was pretty much it. Like, if you replaced her with a generic NPC in that support, not much would be, be different. So, didn't like this one all that much, but not the worst. This was yet another pairing that pleasantly surprised me. I'd heard people liked uh, Arthur and Setsuna better, but I really loved this one. Stat-wise, I was hoping it'd make Percy a complete monster. It didn't really, so that was unfortunate. But um, it was pretty good for what it was, and I did like their supports quite a lot. And then we come to this one. Yeah, this one. This is the one pairing I've done in this whole game so far that I've actually outright hated. It really felt like he demanded that she settle for him without her actually loving him, and I don't think they would have had a happy family life at all. At least they worked well together on the battlefield. This was an alright pairing in the end, but uh, if, uh, again, I like... There are better pairings for Mozu, really, and probably better pairings for Kaze, so... This is another one that I feel was just, like, average. Not great, but not terrible, just average. Oh, huh, it's kind of funny, the two Ninja Brothers ended up uh, next to each other in the epilogue. Oh wow, we're at these two already! So, for this one, I like their S support on Conquest better, but I like the C to A on Revelation better. Oh, we don't get a different ending of uh, for Azura on this route since she didn't die here. That's kind of annoying. And that would be the last one. So, yeah. That's the end of Revelation. But it's not quite the end of what I plan to do for this game. Let's just say that. There are a few more things to do, some heroes of the past to fight, an alternate dimension to go ahead and save, most likely, not really sure what that entails, but we'll go through that, and a few of the DLC chapters that I've really wanted to do because they're based on chapters from earlier games that I played. So this isn't quite the end, but for Kamui's story, it is. Thus ends the tale of the Great Face Toucher. 
The one who traveled through many alternate realities, making choices until he finally landed on the choice that would allow him to maximize the faces he could touch. The end. Oh, wait a minute. We get to choose some uh, five people to bring over. So let's bring Kamui. Let's... Uh, this hero is just so good that I want to bring him over. And let's see. Maybe we should just bring over all the royal children. Might as well do that, actually. Forest, no. Uh, might as well bring as... Shit, as always. Yeah, might as well bring uh, Draconic Hex to Gure. Forest, because I quite liked how he did here. Where the heck is is is, uh, is Sigbert? Oh, there he is. Yeah, let's bring Sigbert over too. That's it. That's who we're bringing over. And now we know what this this scene means. Azura's finally thrown the pen into the lake. There's no further need for it. Anankos has been defeated and... Do you think there might be alternate realities? Other me's? Other you's? Wait a second. That means there are other Anankoses, aren't there? Well, I guess the world isn't quite saved yet. There is still more to come. And, yeah, we still more to, to do in terms of Anankos' final piece, so... See you next time, I guess.